Hi everybody, welcome to the kitchen. Um, Sarah and I are shooting here today. We actually had planned to do like a proper video, um, but <laughs> it has not happened. We've literally just managed to get Jessie to sleep. Margo has been down for a while, but she's about to wake up any minute. So we were like, quick, let's film something. So we're gonna multitask and we're gonna film while we, I say we, mostly Sarah, preps dinner. I will help prep dinner. I tend to do most of my prepping when the kids are asleep so I try and think of meals like what can I do right. that I can prep so that by the time it's like bath and bed and just shove it in the oven or I've got like most of a salad and I just like fry off the protein. Today's video is a Q&A. I went on to Instagram um, to ask you guys to ask me some questions. So Sarah and I are going like, to pass the camera around, ask each other some questions. I'm going to help do whatever needs to be done. Chop We're making vegetables. chili con carne. We're making chili. Um, I'll, I'll help with under Sarah's guidance and we'll just get the video going. The first question is, is your family complete now? Tough question to answer that, isn't it? Oh, do you know what? It is a bit, sorry to like be negative on the first question, but it's so weird. Compost, what bin, compost. It's so weird that what, as soon as you have a child, people ask you when you're having another child. <laughs> right. Like, oh yeah. no, I'm just trying to stay awake. Yeah. Like when I'm asleep, or, I'm awake or not, I'm trying to get some sleep. So for now, no more. Uh, but who knows in five years time, if the stress hasn't got to us. Yeah, I, I love children. I so I, We're both from a big family, so we both kind of felt like we wanted a lot, but then when you get to the reality of it, you're like, this is hard work. It's really hard, yeah, it's really hard. Oh, this is the first time, I had my hair done earlier today, and this is it the first nice. time I've really seen it in the camera. Mm. Anxiety around parenting, like, am I doing a good job? How do you cope? <laughs> I feel like that never goes away. Like, that's kind of funny today. Um, so Jim's oldest sister, Sam, her daughter is now 18 and she's going to university this week. And Sam literally posted in our family chat this morning about the like, I've just got to let, I've got to let go. I've just got to let go. So I would say anxiety clearly doesn't go away if at 18 you're still worried about the kids. But, and even my mum says, my mum always says you're only as happy as your least happy child. And that's so true. Like I'm constantly, worrying about the kids and thinking am i doing enough i don't think that ever goes away do you think jim yeah i, I think I, I read somewhere before that if you are a parent and, and i'm not sure how how much i believe this but something like if you're a parent and you're worried that you're not good enough as a parent then you're doing a good then job. you're doing a good job because all parents worry all good parents worry that they're not doing a very good job uh, I think that's kind of part of it i mean i don't know a parent that doesn't that being said though when the going is good and both my kids are on top form. I know I'm doing a good job and I own that. I know that I'm a really good dad when, but, but only under the, under the condition when both the kids are happy. Yeah. Otherwise I'm like, oh shit, I'm ruining everything. This question is funny. Uh, can you please tell me how your sofa is doing with kids, stains, etc. thank you. Uh, if you've been following for a while, you'll know we had this whole area renovated and um, I'm not even gonna take any responsibility for this. It was Sarah's choice. Sarah chose a cream sofa. It I is beautiful so in like a really gorgeous sort of boucle um, fabric. But as you can see, we have a throw over it now because if you look closely, there is like marks. To be fair, it's not done so badly and we haven't even like had it cleaned yet. Tiff, I'll tell you when to stop. Stop. Whoa. Whoa. That is uh, some smoked paprika. How do you both deal with anxiety slash low mood? Any tips? Now, anxiety and low mood is something that both Sarah and I historically, presently, currently, and I'm sure in the future, do deal with um, regularly. Uh, we're both really open with each other about it. There are times where I feel anxious or uh, I feel like a little bout of depression coming on or something. And, and she'll often see it before I even know it myself but I will just say, I'm not feeling so hot, <laughs> give me some time. And we deal with it in different ways. Like, I actually quite like my space um, and Sarah likes more affection, am I right? You just kind well, of want I, to... I literally texted you this morning, 10.55, right. I'm a bit anxious. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been struggling. It's interesting how like hormones change after having a baby and you get like different different symptoms of things. So I spoke about it before on your video after Margo, I came out with acne yeah, yeah. and that was, I think my hormones rebalancing. This time around, I haven't had acne and like, or touch wood, and my, I haven't had like postpartum hair loss, but I've been so anxious. And often when I get anxious, there's a, there's a thing 
that I right. feel anxious about. For me, my anxiety is usually around work stuff and about um, uh, providing. You know, yeah, so, say, so say it's that you like you feel anxious, but then suddenly when you kind of go, I go through things in my head like. Am I feeling, I don't know, subconscious about my weight or am I worried about money or whatever it is? And at the moment, I go through all these things and there's nothing that's like making me feel that way. I just feel that like sickiness and I'm sure that it's like my hormones rebalancing. You know what else? We, we both have plenty of therapy. In fact, I'm speaking to my therapist tomorrow at 4pm. Um, Sarah speaks to her therapist what, every like month or so, I'm three weeks? I'm speaking to mine on Thursday at 4pm. Well, there we go. <laughs> and actually, do you know what? This uh, is a very neat segue into uh, the paid partnership part of this video. So I am in a paid partnership with BetterHelp. Uh, I've mentioned it before a number of times, actually. I mentioned it a few weeks back. Um, I mentioned it last year. It's um, a really, uh, I would suggest, invaluable resource. Basically, it's essentially remote therapy. Um, from, from where you stand, uh, you can talk to a therapist um, via an app or like on a messaging system. You can do it on the phone, you can do it over like a video call. Not all therapists, it's not like one size fits all, right? So you might start, I've had friends who have started therapy and felt like their therapist just hasn't like understood them properly. I think that's the best, one of the best bits of advice in terms of therapy that you can give someone. Right. And it's what I would say to any of my friends is, there will be the right person for you mm -hmm. and if they don't feel right the first you know give it a session or two and if it doesn't feel right there will be someone else right. so better help basically you fill in some information a better help would match you with a therapist but if you feel like uh, they haven't quite got the match right and you are not like um what these word vibing <laughs> but they, you're not like yeah you, you're not kind of um connecting properly you don't think they understand you fully you can just change it's very easy to do also, I have a link for you. So if you're struggling or you feel weight or you feel anxious, you feel depressed, you feel anything, even if actually you just want an impartial person to talk to, to vent and get things off your chest, uh, the link is betterhelp.com forward slash Chapman and you get 10% off your first month. Um, again, highly recommend it. I've used it. I think it's fantastic. Um, I'm a big fan of, of um, talking and seeking help. How was the jump from naught to one kids harder or one to two kids? Personally, I feel like the going from naught to one was harder because I feel like I had no idea what to, what to expect with Margot. So from my personal journey, like breastfeeding, sleeping, routine, all of the kind of general day to day of it, even silly things like working out how to put the harness on and the sling, I feel like that's that easier going one to two than it was not not to one. Um, Jim feels I the opposite. Think, I, think, uh, um, I just feel like time is more divided. Time is not my friend right now. I'm working on a few things as well, which take up more time. Um, and the other thing is having the context of a really gorgeous toddler who is like great vibes really makes you realize how tricky the newborn stage is because the yeah, thing about i would agree with you that it's quite hard because the newborn um obviously we we love jesse so much but you don't like you don't get anything, get, back. Get anything back that is hard smiles around the corner though as soon yeah. as they start smiling and that's usually around now ish she's what five and a half weeks yeah it's usually around like six to eight weeks they start smiling and that is a game changer because you feel like you've got something in return but in the meantime, they suck you dry. They literally suck Sarah dry because obviously she's breastfeeding, but they take all your time and your energy and you're just constantly exhausted. And it's, it's really, really difficult. I mean, you love them, don't get me wrong. But in the context of having Margot, who is a gorgeous little toddler who's running around and gives cuddles and kisses and like goes, Daddy, and takes me by the hand and leads me places and like shows affection. I feel like Jessie's got a better mum at this stage than Margot had okay. because I, like, I remember having like, panic attack when we went out for breakfast when Margot was about the age that Jessie is because I had to breastfeed in public and I was there thinking oh my god what if someone says my thing and I don't want to get my boobs out and I had a horrible meal and this anxiety and now I'd get my boob out on the tube if I had to. Here's one Sarah that you might not want to answer so if you don't I'll let it out. Um, how is Sarah getting fit back after pregnancy? Fitness and postpartum tips. Uh, first, I think it's important to acknowledge genetics that play a huge part in things. Mm. My my mum's side of the family, not so much my dad's, but my mum's side of the family are very like 
lean, mm -hmm. so there's genetics. Also, I was very unwell with both of my children. I didn't really gain that much weight because I had hyperemesis with Margot and vomited a lot, so there wasn't much to lose. But healthy eating is really important to, to me, to you. We eat really balanced meals, and I'm really active. Like, I go for really long walks. I love, I'm about to start doing um, reformer Pilates. You should get signed off. So with Margot, I don't think I ever spoke about it actually, and it was only your brother that kind of mentioned it to me. I had something called, I don't know how to pronounce it, diastasis recti, which is where the line here in between your tummy oh, is Oh yeah, I forgot about that. And you get, some people it's really but obvious. they spread apart. They spread apart. Yeah, that's so you wild. you have to be careful of what, so you can't do, if I'm correct, you, I couldn't do like crunches that way or twisting because it made it worse. Right. But I could do things like a plank. And um, we were with... And just swap arms. Yeah. So we were, we were with John and Rosie. I think that's what happened. And I said something to John about, I said, I've been exercising, but my tummy feels really funny. And um, he had a look and was like, whoa, because <laughs> I had that big gap. Yeah, so yeah. I had to be really careful of what I did with Margot. So I went and had something called a mummy MOT, which is really great. They do them like lots of physios. I've forgotten about all of this. Yeah, well, all up and down the country are physios that are trained to do this checkup and they'll check your pelvic floor, they'll check your tummy, they'll check all that kind of stuff and then tell you what's safe to exercise. So I am going to do that on Friday. Right. Um, so in the meantime I've just been doing long walks, anything gentle, stretches, that kind of thing. And then I'm hoping to get signed off, not have the stretchy tummy and do a bit of dynamic reformer pilates. Anyway, uh, here's the chilli. I'm going to end this video now because we've walked Oh, it needs to reduce down a lot, so there's not much um, to see there. I've also, if anyone's interested at home in terms of cooking, because we are on a health kick, um, I think it was Jamie Oliver, I will do it, added some butternut squash chopped and some sweet potato chopped, which I always do because it just makes it go a bit further and it's nice as a bit of healthy lunch the next day. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. A um, bit of an impromptu one. Uh, but we had to squeeze it in in between naps. Um, so have a wonderful day. Goodbye.